one of the most common patterns in functional programming is mapping. Mapping is the process by which we take some user specified function and apply it to every element of some data structure, usually something like a sequence or a tree. When we do this, we transform the original input in some user specified way, but that maintains the same base underlying structure that we started out with. So for example, what I mean by that is if we start with a list mapping over a list, we'll transform each element of the list. If we take a tree, uh, we map over that tree and then each element of the tree is transformed and turned into a new tree. But we aren't coming up with any fundamentally new data structure or anything like that. That's going to be a more general pattern that we're going to see later called accumulation or folding or looping over some data. But for now, let's talk about this pattern of mapping over some list. All right, so to introduce the concept of mapping, we're going to talk about how we might write a function using the typical mechanism that we've been discussing the past few lectures, which is just direct style recursion. All right, so if I want to use direct style recursion to square the values of every element of a list, what I'm going to do is I'm going to check to see if the list is null. And if it is, then I'm going to just return the empty list, right? Because how can I square a list of values if the list of values is empty? The only thing it makes sense to give back is just the empty list. All right, so otherwise, if it's not the empty list, it's a con cell. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to square the car. So I'm going to square the first element of the list. And then I'm going to compute the rest of the squares. So how do I do that? Well, I just use recursion. So I'm going to say, compute the square of the rest of the list. I'm going to assume that square list values then gives me a list of all of the squares of the rest of the elements. What I'm going to do is use cons to tack that uh, first element now been squared onto the front of it. All right, so the recursive case finally extends that new tail list by this first element. All right, so now what I'd like to do is I'd like to discuss how we can write squares list values just by using this function map that I'm going to demonstrate up here. So all right, I've got this function map written out. Map takes two inputs. It takes a function f and a list l st. And what this function map is going to do is it's going to walk through every element of lst and it's going to apply f to it. And then it's going to give you the result where you've basically take you've taken f and you've mapped it through the entire list l that you get as your input. So look how the structure of map once you ignore the names, so we've got an extra argument f right here that gets applied. There's no argument f here, so there's an extra argument. But look, the entire structure is the same. All right? And that's just because writing this style of recursive functions over lists, writing these natural direct style recursive functions over lists, is just a very common pattern that pops up. Map codifies the fact that we often just want to recapitulate the structure of a list while applying this function over it. That's just something you'd often want to do in, in functional programming. So now I've got an exercise that we're going to wrap this up with. I'm asking this in this exercise to write an implementation of and map. And and map is going to take a predicate. Remember, a predicate is a function that returns either true or false for some value. So for example, uh, string ha is a predicate. Um, equal to ha is kind of a predicate, but it takes two arguments. So something like um, these kind of type predicates, let's say, a single argument predicate, that's what our and map is going to accept. And so for example, and map list ha will return true on this input, where I've got this list of lists here, but it's going to return false on this input because this right here is just a con cell. All right, and it's also going to return false on this list right here because and map is asking whether list ha is true of every single constituent of this list. It's not asking whether this predicate is true of the entire input here. It's asking is is and you're doing an and map. So you're saying is it true of everything? And then the other thing to keep in mind is that our implementation sort circuits. All right. So this gives our first hint. What should we do for um, the empty list? So for the empty list, we should return uh, true, right? Because we're looking to falsify ourselves. So let's uh, let's go to uh, Racket. Load up Dr. Racket. All 
So let's define and map of some function f on some list l. And we're going to say if, um, if we've got the empty list, then return true. Because and map just checks that some predicate holds over every single element of a list. So if we've got an empty list, there's nothing to check. And so we might as well return true. It'd be kind of silly to return false because nothing has been validated or nothing has been invalidated. All right. What about the other case? Otherwise, check if property holds for first element. Then, if so, also check for the rest. So let's do, um, we'll say if car, so if f holds, so f is a predicate that's going to return either true or false, right? Car of LST. So if that does hold, then what's the result? Well, then we need to check the rest of the list. That's going to be and map f of cutter of LST. Now, what if f is false? Well, then we don't want to process any of the rest of the list. We just want to return false. All right. So let's take that and run it. And then let's go back to our sample inputs that we gave. All right, so we've got this here. All right, so that works. Let's check to make sure that the next two are false. All right, so we'll check this one. The first one is a con cell, so that can't be a list, huh? So this one's false. What about the third one? False. All right. All right, so that's going to wrap up our segment on mapping over lists. We're going to assume that you know how to map over lists in the rest of the class, and I will frequently make use of this function map. However, you can also define maps over other kinds of data structures like trees and other more general algebraic data types. Now we'll talk about how to do that in subsequent lectures when we talk about how to use uh, pattern matching and quasi-quoting and quasi-patterns. All right, talk to you next time.